So today, decided to go out to the range, do some accuracy testing with my Palmetto State Armory AR-15. Yeah, it's chambered in 223 Wild. It's got a stainless steel 18 inch barrel, one to seven twist. I have a Mikulik compensator, Jerry Mikulik, Vortex, Viper, Let's see here, six and a half to 20 by 50. Quarter MOA adjustments, uh, rifle length gas system. It does have a two stage Rock River trigger in there. So that's what I was doing some testing on. And uh, I bought some different types of ammunition here. I'm just gonna run over my results that I got. So we'll start out with the Hornady Superformance Match. It is 75 grain boat tail hollow points. It's supposed to be really premium stuff. Uh, I think Hornady is synonymous with being accurate. In the case of my rifle with the one to seven twist, uh, apparently it does not like the heavier grain bullets, unlike I have heard on the internet. Aim point was here. These three go with that. Aim point dead center there there and all the way down here I have, and these are good trigger pulls uh, those two grouped together not too bad then one flew way left just uh, not real happy with the performance out of these my gun in particular apparently does not shoot them well now before you run away thinking that I can't shoot or that I don't have fundamentals uh, we'll talk about this Fiocchi ammunition Fiocchi whatever you want to call it these are 50 grain varmint tip bullets. Uh, these also look like excellent quality uh, ammunition. So the one to seven, one to seven twist barrel on this AR-15 seemed to really like it. Uh, this is just over an inch group right here. Aim points right there. And then we move over to my first three shots, and that's looking like half MOA. I mean, maybe three quarter. Uh, that is the size of a quarter covers up the tears not doing too bad there I mean this looking like half MOA that's excellent I was very excited and pleased to see that uh, the gun was shooting that well with 50 grains I anticipated it to shoot really well with the heavier bullets uh, through a four shot group on here this one not the greatest I may have pulled off the sights a little bit I'm definitely no marksman I'm not a specific bench rest shooter. I uh, prefer to go out in the desert and shoot steel. But the one to seven stainless steel barrel that I have, maybe it's this particular gun, maybe it's all of the stainless steel barrels from Palmetto State Armory. Uh, it really seems to like that 50 grain. And uh, I'm very pleased with the groups I got out of those. There were two ammunitions that I wanted my gun to shoot well. Something very cheap and something very expensive. Unfortunately, the Hornady did not group well. Uh, the American Eagle 55 grain 223 uh, did not shoot that well either through the gun. Uh, surprisingly, between just 50 and 55 grains, it does make a big difference. Also, it's different brands, different loadings, but this stuff was flying all over the place. Uh, at first, I thought it was something wrong with the scope, so I made sure that that was tightened down onto the rifle. Looks like here's the group on that aim point. Uh, looks like it's going there. I mean, way up here, way the hell up here, all the way back down to here. I was wondering what I was doing wrong before I jumped over to a 50 grain bullet and uh, realized that this ammunition is just not what my gun likes to chew. So before I ever took any to paper, uh, I had bought some bulk PMC ammunition. Usually comes in a black and gold box. This one is the 55 grain. I had this floating around in my ammo can, separated them all out, and uh, wanted to see how it would do on paper. So starting off with this center group here, I mean that's looking just outside of an inch at 100 yards. I was pretty pleased with that uh, as I continued on pulling off here. Those two group not too bad. This one, I mean it may have been a flyer. I'm definitely no marksman here. Again, same pattern here. Two grouped, one pulled off. I mean usually when I'm pulling the trigger it's within this red diamond right here. My sights bounce around just a little bit as anybody would with a pulse. But uh, PMC is not too bad. 
it's really affordable ammunition. I was hoping that my gun would shoot it well, just off the fact that I could shoot an accurate ammunition less expensive. Again, had some of this floating around my box of ammo. Um, this is Wolf Gold ammunition, uh, 55 grain. This is 223. These have sealed primers, annealed cases. Uh, I've had zero feeding issues with these, with the rifle length gas system on an 18 inch barrel. Uh, I know that steel cased wolf does not cycle this gun. It doesn't like to chew that very much, but uh, I've had good luck with this wolf gold. Uh, we'll drag over the target here. And right off the bat, this one's not the greatest. Uh, this could be me, could be the wind picked up a little bit. I did have a headwind. It's probably only five to 10 miles an hour. Uh, right here, it's grouping really well, uh, probably with about within an inch. Grab a quarter and compare that real quick. Just outside of a quarter, not too bad. Pretty pleased with that. But I think this is more representative of uh, the kind of accuracy I can expect out of this gun with Wolf Gold 55 grain FMJ. Again, very affordable ammunition. I was hoping that it would shoot it well just because I can shoot more for less money. Moving on, I uh, have another ammunition here. It is Winchester. It is 62 grain. It is also 223. Um, this one's mid range price. It's not a match ammunition, but uh, as you can see here, $14.99 for a box of 20. Uh, I would expect some good accuracy out of this. I was hoping with the uh, 62 grain. Uh, when I was looking for my ammunitions to compare against each other, I was actually looking for heavier grain bullets because I believed that the 1 to 7 twist should stabilize the heavier bullets. As it turned out, it really likes 50 grains. Uh, 55 grains, even not so much, but it both the rounds of 50 grains I shot were within one MOA. So uh, here's the Winchester top right group. Those two, not too bad. This one, I know that I did have a bad trigger pull. So that one's out, but uh, from the other groupings that I see here, uh, just not that great. I mean, this one, I'm not sure if this guy connects with these two. There had to have been something going on there. Uh, I'm definitely going to admit that could totally be me. Uh, any area in here is not me, but this gun prefers 50 grain bullets. Uh, I'm really curious if anyone else has that same experience but uh these heavier grain bullets for me aren't shooting well uh the pretty low wind conditions uh the temperature was between 75 and 80 degrees it's a really nice day the elevation is about 5,000 feet but uh, i'm running a 20 power scope up to the target at 100 yards i have pretty good visual um not too bad i don't think that i would drag this out for extended range shooting Shooting the American Eagle 223 50 grain varmint tipped ammo. It's interesting to see the difference between uh, the American Eagle 223 55 grain full metal jackets. Uh, just that 5 grains difference uh, made quite a big difference on the point of impact. But uh, seeing that they're both from the same brand, they probably have really similar quality control. Uh, it tells me a lot about how the different grains affect. Uh, my rifle's accuracy. Right here, uh, a great group, uh, just outside the edges of a quarter. I mean, that's a quarter, it's right about one inch, and uh, it's just outside of an inch. I mean, also over here, three shot group, barely outside the edges of a quarter. But uh, that's good accuracy there. I mean, for an AR-15, uh, I'm really happy with this semi-auto precision rifle. Uh, these are also just outside that one inch group. I mean, I highly suggest that anybody uh, goes and does some accuracy testing with different types of ammunition, uh, mostly focus on grain weights and uh, see what your gun in particular likes to shoot. I mean, you may have this same gun, but your gun loves 75 grains and 50 grains are flying all over the map. So go out, do your own independent testing. I think you will learn a lot about it and I'm gonna to continue to find out which 50 grain can pull even better accuracy than this.
So something really interesting I found out was uh, the Winchester ammo here. Being a 223, I've heard that 223 is supposed to be slightly more accurate than 556. I mean, just barely. Uh, when compared to this, uh, SSA 556 ammo, uh, it's right at the same price point. This is 63 grain. Again, the West Winchester was 62 grain. I would think they would shoot really similarly, uh, but this being a 223 wild barrel, I wanted to make sure I got some 556 in this test to see how it did. Uh, these are soft points, while the Winchesters are full metal jackets. I don't think that makes too big of a deal while just shooting paper at 100 yards, but uh, we'll jump into here. These not being representative of what this ammunition is capable of. Here's the first group I shot, and uh, that looks just outside of an inch. I'm very pleased with that. It really makes me happy to see that out of a 5.56. But this is where it gets interesting, uh, the reliability of this. This is the only ammunition that my gun did not cycle 100%. Uh, it did have a misfeed where the bullet was angled up and was pinched up against the feed ramps. Uh, I don't remember which magazine it was in. I think it was in my Lancer, which today was the first time shooting with that. I didn't go full 20 rounds or anything. I'd just load up three at a time to help my barrel cool between each shooting session. I tried not to get my barrel too hot. Uh, I've never really tried to get my barrel hot at all. I don't do mag dumps or anything like that. Magpul had 100% liability out of this although I don't think it was the Lancer magazine's fault for uh, it not cycling well because there were a couple short strokes where uh, I had taken a shot recuperated ready to take the next shot hit the first stage of the trigger hit the second stage it clicks and nothing goes uh, it did not load another round that being said uh, it really kind of makes me sad because right here we're shooting into a quarter at 100 yards that's within an inch uh, that's fantastic I'm very excited I was super happy to see this come out of this ammunition uh, any ammo that you pay more for I think you should get more performance and I'm definitely seeing it here uh, and then right here I mean this is best of the day within a dime three rounds 100 yards here's my point of aim between all these ammunitions, their point of impact shifted just because of the different pressures and grains of bullets and whatnot. But I mean, that is fantastic. That that is precision right there. Not only that, I have seen uh, Falcor Defense brag that their five thousand dollar three hundred Win Mag uh, Petras with their carbon fiber proof research barrels. Uh, they're showing these groups off, saying, uh, "Look how fantastic we are." Well, uh, this Palmetto State Armory mass-produced rifle just shot that with 5.56 ammo that's not even match quality. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure what this is intended for, intended for, maybe really small game. I wouldn't really go for anything large with just a 2.23, but uh, super excited with that accuracy. But again, I was having uh, issues with it feeding and short stroking and uh, kind of breaks my heart a little bit. I was hoping that I could have reliable feeding and accuracy with this. This is an accurate round. Uh, maybe with a carbine length gas system it would perform a little bit better. So if you have a 5.56 five, or a 223 wild chambered AR-15, uh, i definitely recommend this. This is the best I got out of all day. Uh, outside of that, I think I'm going to be sticking with the 50 grain varmint tipped ammunition.